Hey everyone, my name is Lena. I'm a mother of two. I have free birth at home. I'm also a doula and support women that want to free birth. I'm inspired by women speaking their truth and being honest and real and um, following their heart and yeah. I'm currently interviewing women that free birth and um, I hope you find the interviews inspiring. I'm trying to give you as many different stories as possible so you understand that you're not alone and um, that you have everything you need. I hope you enjoy the interview. Please feel free to comment below or get in touch with me if you want to speak about your free birth. I'm only looking for women that had planned unassisted birth and um, no midwife as a backup. Lots of love and um, enjoy. Okay. Hey, Maria. Hey, Lena. Do you want to introduce yourself to the women? Yes. Uh, first of all, hello to everybody who is watching this video now. I'm Maria. I uh, have uh, 26 years old. I will uh, turn them in uh, in July. I'm a mother of two children. My first son, uh, whose name is Amin, and my second son, whose name is Rumi. Uh, I am I am a partner. I I think it is important for myself to recognize myself like this. And um, I also, in my free time, I am uh, I'm exploring uh, something which is called pranic nourishment, which means uh, for a being to move to alternative sources of, of nourishment, except the ones that we know. And this, uh, it is very interconnected with my whole life. Uh, and is challenging also my mother's side, also my my woman's side, and uh, yeah. So these are my departments, my my private as a mother and partner, and uh, and what tends to go into professional as a, I would just call it as a as a being. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. So quite this is this is the most important about me. And um, why why did you free birth? Uh, why I think it is uh, I would have to think a lot why, but I have a feeling that free birth is more of a feeling which is inside of us. So the question why. Uh, yeah now gives me the space to think about uh, maybe it was because with my first son although i have experienced a hospital birth i was 90 percent of the time alone i experienced the birth uh the pre-birth or the birth process nobody uh, um, controlled me or over controlled me very much the midwife came only when I have asked for. So being put in such a situation where I was in a hospital and still I was alone, I have said that I don't have to be again in a hospital if it happens. So I can be alone in my own home. And, um, and also it was a feeling of um, that I could have made it the way I wanted. This was also a layer. So in a way, it was, a, it was a way to also to prove to myself that I have an ability to, to navigate my own experiences. This was what led me to, to free birth my second son. When did you get the idea or when did you hear about free birth? Was it before you got pregnant with your second child or was it during the pregnancy that you heard more about it and then got interested? Also in my first pregnancy, I had one time an idea to just give birth at home with the father of my son and a friend. Um, 
and I also got the support of my father at that time when we were discussing. Um, I don't think it came from any informational points such as internet or books or other women. It, maybe it, it, it is also my nature that in general I prefer to do things alone <laughs> rather than to give this, this uh, um, also control but also responsibility and also this chance to experience whatever it is to be experienced on my own. So in general I, I'm the type of person who if I can do it alone I will do it alone. <laughs> And um, how did you prepare? Or did you prepare? Was it important for you to prepare yourself? Yeah, here with my second son, it was a mix of, it was a mix of, uh, in the beginning, there were no preparations, mainly because my partner, whenever I was trying to tell him, let's look a video. <laughs> um, even when I, when, I, when I said to him, let's look Lena's video, he said to me, why do you want to enter in her private sphere? <laughs> and I said, for, for inspiration. And he said, no. He said to me, women have naturally inside them the ability to give birth. They don't need to, to, to get any knowledge from outside. As, and I was trying to tell to him, okay, a little bit, maybe we get inspired. He was mainly trying to tell me to not have any fear because it will all go naturally as it is given to be. But then slowly, slowly, uh, as we were advancing, um, I think just the process of the pregnancy itself showed us that there are some parts of myself and as at, at, at himself, which needed a little bit of, um, of um, reinforcement or reassurance um so we could just simply call them fears but uh, productive fears and we prepared um we watched some videos but for me each time when i was watching a video it was not to get informed but it was to it was more um uh, a feeling of um of empathy because i was seeing the women giving birth and I was seeing, I was feeling them, their force, I was feeling them, their power, their uh, also uh, the chaos inside them. And at the end of each video, I used to cry. <laughs> I think a lot of women who are pregnant and watch these home birth videos, they end up crying when the baby comes out. So on this level, I prepared myself, but it was more about uh, um, uh, empathic preparation. Mm, so I could find in myself what I was seeing in others. Some natural feelings were, were coming out on the surface. Then I was preparing um, <clears throat> on, um, how to call it, on um, outside help from natural uh, um, sources. So I researched about plants that are good for uh, different phases of the, of the labor. Then of course, going and searching these plants and buying these plants. And um, then also I have prepared for the emergency cases. So whatever uh, could have uh, came and uh, could have uh, become a real problem. Um, we downloaded a book uh, called, I think, uh, Emergency Childbirth or something like this. What what could what we have to do in cases of non-breeding and uh, yeah, how to? I th yeah, let's just call it emergency childbirth. I think it was. Um, um, on an informational level, it was this. Yeah, and maybe at the end, I remember I made a list for everybody what to do uh, in different phases of the labor. 
Um, and the most important uh, preparation was arranging the house every day <laughs> because I had to arrange the birth space. Uh, so I had my own ritual of cleaning every day, uh, the whole pregnancy, um, putting the holy smokes. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, I have painted the birth mandala, um, which uh, would have been my focus, my point focus for the birth. I have also built a, a little altar with a neighbor of mine who worked on wood, so it was a very simple one, but I put in all the elements, so this would have been the more emotional, spiritual preparation, which I think it was the most important. Mm, yeah. So these are the levels on which I have prepared myself. Mm, what gave and uh, yeah. Uh, excuse me, and also another preparation was um, there were a lot of fears coming on different moments of the pregnancy, and I allowed them to be. Um, also, uh, challenges from my life which seemed to not be connected to birth, but to my woman's side, so I also had to allow them, and later on I recognized that without this process, I would have uh, encountered at birth um, other challenges. So I saw the connection in between them and yeah. yeah. And what gave you trust and confidence and how did you how did you experience your pregnancy? What did you do to take good care of yourself and to be healthy and at peace and yeah, looking forward to the birth? We were um, we were lucky that throughout the pregnancy we have been uh, in a so the pregnancy was more or less in the winter time. So we have been in a, in a warm place. We have been in uh, in La Gomera in the Canary Islands. So I could go every day to the um, uh, to the ocean on the beach. We were in a small village, which more or less became like our community. We we knew all the all the villagers, and everybody was asking me, uh, "How is the pregnancy? When are you giving birth?" Um, friends were bringing us uh, mangoes and fruits. Um, so this was, the environment was, was very good for me for the pregnancy. I stayed quite, quite, um, quite low on activities. I kept, um, I kept a, a lifestyle which was good for me and for my personality. So um, I like to stay more in the house and, um, and be more, at peace and drink a tea and uh, arrange my house. So I had the possibility to do this every day, which of course gave me a emotional stable uh, safetyness. Um, then uh, my, my nutrition became in the pregnancy um, uh, almost 90% raw with tendency to fruits. So I also had the, I had them available like on farms next to us, mangoes and avocados and bananas. So from this 90% or even more, let's say 80% were fruits. And my own spiritual uh, tendency which, uh, as I said, it is, uh, it is mixing to nourish pran uh, punishment, um, which uh, it's, a, it's a way of, uh, of connecting to the universal energy and uh, feeling more and more inspired, feeling, feeling more and more uh, able to, to be in your full capacity, um, 
this was helping me very much because it was uh, uh, it is my daily lifestyle which uh, involves uh, meditation and uh, infusion in this in this pranic channel which um, is uh, is similar to a to a sweet nectar bath <laughs> so this was it and um, at exactly at this moment i forgot your question so if you if you could repeat it to, to go back on track it would help me i asked what what did you do to nourish yourself to feel healthy to take how did you take good care of yourself and um, yeah to have the confidence and the trust to to free birth yeah okay and just i think the most important what i have experienced throughout the pregnancy is that i was uh, i was allowing whatever life was inspiring me to do moment by moment much more than than in my uh, much more than now for example because now it's a mixture in between uh, organizing and and uh, sitting down and resting so then yeah i gave myself i allowed myself to to use my creativity i allowed myself to 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 rest as much as i could of course because of my first son yeah but if i wanted to sing now i was singing so i think this was more the most important that i allowed myself to to do what comes to me or what comes through me and wants to be expressed did you maria did you have any outside prenatal care how how was your pregnancy in that way so the first part of the pregnancy the first months they were in austria it was before us uh, uh, shifting to la gomera and i have been here to my to my uh, gynecologist to my doctor um I did hear, um, this was also one thing that I found out later and I was not so, so happy about. So I did hear uh, two ultrasounds um, asking before if they are necessary, they are um, mandatory. And the, my own gynecologist said to me that yes, they are mandatory. Later on, I when I researched, I think after birth, I have found out that they are not. All ultrasounds in Austria, they are at your choice. They are recommended, but they are not mandatory. So this, when I found out, of course, made me a little bit upset because I would have preferred to make as, as less as possible. And then after we shifted to La Gomera, in La Gomera, the medical system, the prenatal system, it is completely different you do not go to to uh, to the doctor but you meet each month with the midwife and you spend one hour with the midwife and you talk with her also about emotional stuff also about family also about nutrition and alternatives so in the rest of the pregnancy i think which was more than six months I met just one time with a doctor and if I, it would be to compare the meeting with that specific doctors, of course, there can be others, other personalities of doctors, but if it would be to compare the meeting with that doc doctor, with my monthly meeting with my midwife, I would always choose the midwife because it was so familiar, so close, so open yeah so this was the prenatal care so the pregnancy was under uh, professional uh, or medical observation also because i think like in most of the countries also in austria you have later on to show this as part of this entire responsibility medical responsibility or prenatal responsibility as a mother um yeah so this was the medical prenatal care that i that i had to and i chose to 
to have it. Yeah. Because I was speaking, I was reading about the situation in Austria before, is that um, you have to do certain prenatal checkups and visits in order to get the money. Like it's not, like what kind of money? What, like what is it about? In Austria, it is like this. In Austria, when you, when you become pregnant, they give you a booklet. It's called the, the Mutterkind Pass, the Mother-Child Pass. And in order uh, to, to get, uh, I, I, I think I will, say in, I will say in English and I will, try, I will say in German and I will try to translate it in English. So actually, I have a, actually I have a feeling that, that um, the medical system and the state system actually is asking you to make these controls to prove to them that you are living in the country in which the child is a resident is not necessarily to give you the the, the specific money uh, because the specific money here in austria there are, one is called familien by hilfe mm -hmm. which i think it is like uh, it is given to the child so it belongs to the child and Kinderbetreuungsgeld, which is related to the family who has a lower income or who has an income lower than, than, than I think, 1,000 or I, I don't know exactly. But if you do not respect this and in the end, if you don't have uh, five uh, stamps on, on, on this book, uh, they they cut uh, from from the money that uh, that they are giving to the families or they are asking uh, supplementary questions why you didn't have them you have not been in the country you have not you have traveled so more or less it is a form of uh, of control because i imagine if you give birth to a child uh, yeah then you put him in kindergarten you put him in uh, before kindergarten and it's a whole uh, it's a whole system which has to be maintained and though in sweden in sweden we do have prenatal care with the midwives or a doctor if you choose to but it's not related to the money that you get in the end for taking care of your child or yeah being able to make a living like it's not related at all you can choose to not do any prenatal care and you will still or your child will still be supported if you need to mm -hmm. yeah yeah i found it quite shocking when i heard about it actually for the first time that in austria it's so um connected and i thought maybe more women should like speak up against it because i think it's not how it should be that you're forced to into doing or that you're being paid for doing certain exams like you're actually getting money for doing them or you don't get money if you choose to not do them yeah no, I, I have a feeling that it should be a little bit more um this entire thing with the the pregnancy and the money and the doctors involved, it creates a lot of tension. It is not like a human conversation. When I, for example, have said to my doctor that I would like to make us less invasive controls, that means that no ultrasounds and I would prefer just touching and, and like this. And I simply said to him, but of course I'm under the pressure uh, of the financial part afterwards. He, uh, he, he said to me, uh, in a way you are just after the money <laughs> and I couldn't believe that me and my doctor we are I'm, I mean I'm a mother and I couldn't believe that we that we reached or he reached such a conclusion where I think it is uh, in the end being a mother it is a job and and it is normal to receive support for you and for your child and for the time where you are not able even to 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 focus to develop uh, uh, an idea which would produce uh, income or 
So there are many things involved, but for sure it should be a much more uh, fluid uh, conversation in, in between the doctor, in between the state, in between the mothers, uh, and not such a pressuring uh, situation. Mm. Um, Maria, how did how did your par um, your partner experience the pregnancy? And um, you said you have an older son. Did you prepare him? Um, yeah. Okay, so I will start with my older son. Mm -hmm. uh, I tended for a while to. To go into this idea that maybe my older son will get jealous and I have to prepare him but after a very short time I have renounced this idea and I just went on naturally showing him my belly seeing baby inside we were singing songs I was presenting to him like like words that I knew he had no idea what it means he had no idea that inside my belly there is a baby which is his brother but what was interesting was that after some time with this uh, silly games a dog he my 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 uh, or my elder my older son he met a dog and he was <laughs> carrying the dog in his uh, in his baby carriage and he was saying baby baby <laughs> so i realized that okay he understands and he treats this little dog as his baby and so this was very you know very i was feeling it very much in the heart i liked it very much when it happened so i just i i just prepared my son naturally he could see that i have a big belly he was playing with he with the belly he even bited my belly button one time, which I didn't like it at all. And I, I reacted very um, instinctual, like more like a lioness when he did this. Mm. Yeah, so I just, I, I don't think I have had the thought of preparing him more. I have had the thought of showing him this new, this new thing that uh, is happening. How old was your son, Maria, when you were pregnant or when his brother was born? So now he's two years and uh, two months. Yeah, so when, uh, when Rumi, when my second son was born, he was two years, I think, or no, something like this. Yeah, yeah, or less than two years, yeah. Um, and my partner, how he has prepared himself. <laughs> I would say on, on the length pregnancy, he became much more involved with Amin, with my first son. So they were going outside spend more time together and even though it, it would seem that not connected actually it has a connection um, because until then he never had the chance to spend so much time with with uh, with him I was spending a lot of time with him and um, as for the pregnancy for the birth itself He's more a guy who is very intuitive. He's more fluid than me and more, he has more water energy than me, much more. So I think he trusted a lot. Although after birth, he came with some complaints <laughs> that he would be, have preferred to know much more and to be much more involved. And yeah so i don't remember him making a lot of preparations like reading books um, or uh, yeah or even asking me about stuff mm, no he was 
he was as prepared as he could be in himself. He had a lot of trust. Um, maybe there were some moments, for example, when he said he would have liked to have a midwife because I think a lot of pressure was building inside him. So a me he was thinking that a midwife would take this pressure out of uh, out of himself, out of his uh, his um, imagination or. Um, yeah, no, but but he didn't prepare, it, I think, to say it very simple. No. Did you um did you have any birth supplies? Was there anything that you got for the birth, or how how did you envision your birth? Did you want to have a water birth or on the floor, or what did you do to prepare or to what did you have on hand? Okay, so first we had a very small apartment where we were living so we had one room which was our sleeping room which was full of beds one bed for me one bed for papa and one bed for uh, for amin and there was just a small path where, <laughs> where you could walk and we had a kitchen which we transformed it into the birth space in the beginning we tried to find another place but in the end we just said okay I actually said, okay, it gives me more freedom to treat birth as also as a special event, but as a special event that can happen anywhere where you are. So this gave me a lot of freedom to not go and search like a mad person, the perfect house, the perfect arrangement, the perfect uh, idea, how not to wake up my son, where to go, where to move. And I said, okay, this is a special event, but it can happen anywhere where I am. So then the space was, how it was given to us, we only had to use the space that we had. Um, and then with the birth supplies, yes, I had, I did, I do, I did have a lot of birth supplies. <laughs> Starting from uh, a lot of holy smokes like uh, Copal and uh, and um, Palo Santo, which I I wanted to get all my birth supplies. I wanted to get them only from sources that I know, uh, from friends of mine. So I have. Um, I have asked some friends of mine to send me from Austria, for example, this birth supplies. First one, it was the Holy Smokes. Then um, another friend from Romania who is uh, making oils. I have asked her to make uh, a special oil for, for me, for the perineum massage and uh, as well for the birth with plants that I find them very close to me. Uh, so it was an oil from uh, Calendula. Or Camille and sweet almonds. This was uh, this was a beautiful oil. I still use it now. I even sometimes put on my first son when he goes to sleep here a little bit. Then it was the uh, the supply of uh, of herbs to take in the pregnancy. And in the pregnancy, I uh, I was towards the end of the pregnancy. I was drinking uh, raspberry leaf tea. I think a lot of mothers uh, know about this. And then I had other uh, herbs and teas for um, for cases of uh, extreme bleeding, which, thanks God, it didn't happen. Um, and herbs for uh, the afterbirth uh, bath seats, which I have made. And uh, the cold pads that I put uh, to recover. Mm. Then I managed to gather throughout the pregnancy all the towels. <laughs> I gathered a lot of towels and we just used one or two <laughs> in the end. One day before the birth, I managed to make a playlist <laughs> of around 60 songs, but only one song <laughs> I have used. 
And this I'm grateful for my partner because he managed to find this perfect song in the middle of this 60 something songs, although this song didn't have a title and it was the perfect song for the birth. Yeah, I have bought some, uh, some uh, vegetal candles to burn in the, in the night of the birth. Um, and all these uh, medical sterile uh, supplies like uh, oxygenated water and uh, spirit um, and pads, so supplies for afterbirth. I have already decided throughout the labor to not eat and drink because it came naturally like this for me. And as well, some supplies for the um, for the placenta for after for after the birth. Yeah, to infuse it in the in the herbs. So these were the birth supplies. I didn't have the water birth because I didn't wish to have. Um, yeah, but I think the most the most important birth supplies. <laughs> We could say like this where the people around, so the birth suppliers or the birth nourishers were the people around. Mm -hmm. Whom did you wish to have around? First, my partner. Second, there was um, a friend of mine, a French friend of mine, who she radiates so much strength and she helped us many times with Amin and she has a different method of being with, with children and with people, a very strict authoritarian way, but still very heartful. So I knew that if she's there, nothing can go, go wrong. And if something goes wrong, she will be able to manage like a captain the situation. So she had to be there. And um so actually it was mostly about i said no more than four people because the space was small and i more than four people would have been too much and later on as the pregnancy was advancing i also met another french lady very beautiful lady who it went it it fitted very good because she always wished to she had four children of her own and she always wished to support a woman giving birth this was her dream so in a way she always wanted to be a midwife but she was so busy with her mother and wife and taking care of the house um, dynamic that she never managed to to make uh, this dream come true and many and from the moment when she met me she we were preparing together the placenta bag and many other things and she told me this and i said okay let's do it together i need somebody also with this inspiration because to really wish from inside to support a woman giving birth is i think one of the greatest blessing for a woman giving birth because you have somebody who wants to be with you and who wants to also be with the baby. So we put all these puzzles together and then we managed to form a team of, of, of four people. So me, my partner and my two friends. Yeah, and, and this was it. And yeah, and we all four, we gave birth. Do you mean this is how it felt like? Um, yeah, of, of course, because not, not practically, not physically, they were not giving birth, but it felt like we were an organism. And in the end, did you feel it helped, like their presence helped you? Uh, very much. It helped me very, very much. The presence of each of them. And in the same time, there were also moments in which I would have liked to kick some of them out for some time. But I think it was normal. 
Yeah. Uh, no, but everybody had their role in this birth process. And everybody had an ability to be very present, which was, which was essential for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was like a feeling during the pregnancy that you felt like, I want to have those people around me. Because I just, I was thinking about your previous birth at the hospital in which you were alone for quite a while. And now I just try to envision your small living space and then like form people in it and um, yeah. But maybe, maybe we just start by you telling us about your birth and um, so, we, so we actually get to hear how it was and what you did. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> ah, this is also very, very intense for me because it is the first time when I, when I put it all together. So it was, it was this wonderful day of 22 March this year. And um, many times throughout the pregnancy, I felt I'm giving birth, <laughs> uh, especially towards the last part. My partner was always saying, oh no, one more week, one more week. And this day I woke up and I started to feel some contractions. I could also not compare it to the first because in the first pregnancy, the water broke in the beginning. So I knew it is happening, but this time I myself was in doubt if it's happening or not. So we had some friends at us, I was cooking and cleaning and from time to time I had to to sit down and rest because there were the contractions very soft but still were present mm. and uh, the day passed and towards the evening towards something around four or five I took my my son to the to the beach because there were there was a birthday party of a, of a little girl coming from Belgium. So we gathered all of our friends on the beach, also adults, also children, and we ate some pancakes and fruits. And, and then I actually had strong contractions, but <laughs> I was still not sure if I'm giving birth or not. A friend of mine who was also at the party, uh, a Russian friend, we went up to my apartment to talk a little bit about the uh, we had a, a common topic, some meditations and um, yeah, and on the way, she had to hold my hand. We had to, we had to climb a hill. So she had to hold my hand because the contractions were getting quite strong. And at home, I have announced people that maybe I'm giving birth. <laughs> My partner said, no, 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 you're not giving birth tonight. My, uh, my friend who I was talking about that she has very much strength and power, she called her mother. <laughs> so her mother, we call her um, Babolich. <laughs> her mother is an old woman of something around 90 something. She had six children. <laughs> and. Um, we call her and we tell her what is happening. And she says, she will give birth tonight. But why? She said, she, why she said I will give birth tonight? Because on the exact day, it was her birthday. So she intuitively and also intentionally wanted for my son to be born on her birthday. Okay, so now we, we find out from, the, <laughs> from Babulich that I will give birth tonight. <laughs> I put my son to sleep and the contractions are starting to, to become a little bit more strong. Actually, how I realized that tonight I will give birth was because my state of consciousness changed completely. 
So I uh, I, I observed the, the dissolution of time, and um, I was not so um, so involved into the idea that time exists. So everything became much more warm and 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 different. I was feeling much more expanded. So I then I, I, I recollected, I remembered that this feeling was also in the first uh, in the first preg in the first uh, birth. And at the moment I had to retreat in my uh, in the sleeping room <clears throat> uh, because I started to have a little bit of uh, I was I was cold and shaking. So I had to retreat a little bit in my room in my space i stayed there the contraction started to become stronger and then i moved to my i moved to the birth room to the kitchen slash birth room and i just witnessed and experienced the contractions and when the contractions were not, I was just relaxing. I used different methods. Methods, it's a lot to say. I used different ways, which were naturally coming through me to breathe. So there was not one way of breathing. There were just, I think at least three, four. So I, I would say that different contractions were pulling, um, after them or were inviting uh, different ways of breathing. Also the contractions were not the same in intensity. And, and the most important what was happening inside me was actually to realize in the moment of contractions that this is not pain. This is just um, uh, an accumulation of very strong energy in my body which if I do not allow it it will feel like pain but if I allow it it will just feel like like this energy expanding and 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 reaching the the awareness of this energy into my into my organs into my body so I can actually feel and understand what is happening inside me so I would say that that these contractions were um, were acting inside me as something high intelligent that would would let me to explore my inside without my eyes, without my hands, just with a really really deep true feeling. Um, and I also remember also my 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 friends who were present they told me that I was quite chill I was just what the contractions going on the table lifting myself a little bit up and oh, oh. <laughs> so I didn't scream there was no there was a lot of it's on one level yes there was pain but was pain as an experience and not pain as uh, as um, not pain as um, discomfort it was not a pain that was making me uh, be afraid of it it was a pain that was was inviting me to get to know it more and more and more deep by uh, by allowing it on oh, oh in one moment i have decided to to um, time to to track my contractions so on whatever i could write my phone my i was saying okay from five to five minutes five to five minutes i was also asking them at the moment please control my level of dilatation how <laughs> they were not able <laughs> because I think they were thinking that it's still the beginning of the of the labor. I, with my ability to not sense time, I could not remember how how long it passed. Um, and at the moment, I knew that uh, that that the baby is coming. There was a, a first strong contraction. 
and Rumi's head was out in the first strong contraction. I heard him making like a little sheep, was making bah, bah. And uh, with the second contraction, with the second push, he was completely out. The sac, the, the amniotic sac, the sac in which he was uh, got broken when he first came out. So not uh, the people around me, they even saw, they even told me that they saw the translucent bag and they were smiling when they saw this. I think for them it was a quite beautiful image. I, I didn't saw it. Um, yeah, the moment when he came, it was not at all painful. It was, I just felt, I, I felt how he traveled. I felt how he was sliding. Um, yeah, and, and he came out and, and Papa, the father was, was catching him. And then he gave it to me. And then I think like all children, he came to latch, he came to, <laughs> to find the breast. He was so small and he had so long legs and so long fingers. <laughs> I was amazed of his long fingers and long nails. I had uh, a lot of, um, also through the um, through the labor and also the birth and after, even after i had a lot of um, i would also call it uh, auto control but i had the situation in my hands in the sense of awareness and in the sense of what is happening to me and also in the sense of organization so i was not I was not lost somewhere in the space. I was very present. And I treated this moment as, um, as an experience slash experiment for me. So I had to be 100% responsible for what is happening in my mind and in my heart and in my whole being. And when I had him in my arms, as well also with my first one, Maybe it's also my personality. I was not, I was not infused with, with this, this is, I don't know, this love or, or like this. I was, I was happy and, and um, I was happy. It, it, it was a happiness, but I, I was happy that I had him and that all was okay. And that we managed to do this together and that, this is a natural experience. This was more the feeling. It was not the feeling of, of this complete love and, and union, but different personalities, I think, of different, women, of, of different women. But what I want to say is that I was not in this story mode that I thought long ago that when you give birth, you are in a bubble of light and love. <laughs> I thought like it is. No, it was completely different. It was a feeling of being strong and and of, of being true, and it was a more a, a pure honesty. And <clears throat> so this was the story of his birth. Now comes the after story, which is uh, related to the to the afterbirth, to the placenta. Um, the placenta was quite hard to come out. I still had contractions. I, I felt that the placenta went out from the wall that it was attached. It was quite at the exit, but I was maybe also tired and I also wanted for everything to finish so I can sleep and hold my baby in my arms and, and everybody to go to their houses and sleep and 
uh, but the placenta was not coming out. So we waited half an hour, we waited one hour, we waited two hours. And I felt that the people around me were starting to get very scared. Also, they were searching on the internet and it was already becoming too much with this internet and people getting scared and they didn't know what to do. One thought he has to pull, one thought he doesn't have to pull. They were massaging as as we they were massaging the belly as we said that we have to do. And I was becoming also very impatient. Mm. And um, in that moment, we call we called our friend who lives downstairs. He has a, a little bit of, of medical knowledge, and um, he insisted that uh, he proposed and insisted in the same time that maybe it would be good to call the ambulance to to take the placenta out. In that moment, I I. I I tried to, to measure the, the situation. I said, okay, I would really like for this to, to end. I, we, we had in mind to make the, the lotus birth. I knew that if the ambulance comes, the lotus birth will not possible because in their, in their medical uh, uh, stories, uh, it's not possible, something like this. It is uh, uh, an unhygienic or okay but i was tired and i said okay two hours have passed all the the blood was was trans transfused from the placenta to the baby uh, as well all the information that his new breathing can start and we have called the ambulance they were very nice very amazed that a natural home birth without complications can happen at home. Uh, they were also very respectful with the uh, cutting of the cord. They asked uh, if, if the papa wants to cut the cord and I said, and he said, yes, for us was very important that this, this last act is made by, by a person you know, the hand that cuts or the hand is, is a person that is inside the family. And after that, um, as for the procedures of the, of the medical system, um, me and Rumi together, we went to the hospital to make uh, the normal checkups. I have uh, asked them if I can take home the placenta. They were nice enough to, to give it to us at home. They asked me for some, if I want them to make this and that, and I said, nothing, nobody, uh, I, I don't want uh, my son to have, uh, I don't know, they wanted to pinch him in the feet to take something, some vitamins, some vaccines, I said, no, 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 my own responsibility, I sign everything what is needed, and I even said to them, there's no necessity to convince me of something if you want to because uh, I also know they are uh, they have to to tell so it's not like they they have to inform the mother that this is good and that and I said okay if you want to inform me it's okay but there's no need to convince me and um uh, I think more or less everybody was uh, was fascinated that something like this can happen where we were in Spain in, on the island. Normally, all the women go to the hospital, even though midwife stories are not so so well known. Yeah, and I think after a few hours, I went home. So how was I was Maria? How was the birth of the yeah. placenta? So in the end. When did it come out and how did it? Okay. Yeah, in the end, the placenta was uh, was born in the ambulance with the help of uh, of the assistant or, or the doctor, which was in the ambulance. And um, as I remember, he pushed and he pulled, but it felt very good. Actually, this it felt very good when this happened. 
when it came so out. When the, yeah, when it came out, it felt, and also the way that uh, that uh, that the the doctor, I don't think he was exactly a doctor. I don't know exactly what he was, but when he pulled it out, it felt very good. It felt very very easy. It felt. It also felt like he had the knowledge to do this which none of the people present had the knowledge to do this, to, to push and to pull in the same time. So this was, I, I appreciated very much. Yeah, I felt safe when, when he did it. And Do you think maybe less people there or a little bit more patience would have helped and you could have birthed it on your own at home? Because if yeah. you yeah. were looking at the clock and you were counting the hours, and I remember, like for my birth, it took three hours. And I mean, if you feel good, then probably you just wait. But um, yeah, how do you feel about yeah. it now? For sure, if, uh, if uh, nobody around would have been scared and everybody would have had trust in the natural process and... I I would have stayed and it would have came on its own later when it wanted, yes. So you, but you went home just a few hours after you had gone to the hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, just a few more questions. What has helped you doing the contractions? You spoke about the breathing that you did. Um, were there certain positions or movements that you did? Um, what did give you comfort and, uh, yeah, what did give you comfort? Yeah, so the breathing was very important because it helped me to channel this energy which, which was inside me. Um, one of the women have massaged me in a way, it was so good. <laughs> it felt like, it felt like, a, I don't have experience, so I didn't experience what I will say now, but it just felt then, it felt like, like a tantric massage. It felt that, that I'm making love without making love when she massaged me. It felt so good. And, and it was in the time of the contraction and the contraction disappeared when she did this, or I didn't feel them anymore. I think she managed to, through her hands, to, to use this force of the contraction to just make me relax beyond any point that I know. So this massage was very good. Um, after a contraction, I rested for some time on, on the lap of my partner and I went on a very deep dream state. I don't know, for 10 minutes, it was like I was floating. This was the feeling. I was not there anymore. It was, I was just so relaxed. So the comfort of the beloved one was very important. Um, yeah, and what helped? The freedom to move helped. Yeah, I maybe didn't express myself fully in the birth, but I'm also quite a quiet person. But I, there were moments when I was dance. You could you could interpret it as a dance, but it's just a movement of the body, uh, more slow and 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 rhythmic. So this also helps. So I suppose for some women who have a different personality they would like to dance i think it helps a lot yeah and, and these were the elements mm -hmm. and when you said that he was crowning and he came out with the first strong contraction where were you and um, in which position were you when you gave birth to him i felt the most comfortable on my back although we were thinking maybe i will squat or like this we read about the gravity and 
but I felt just very comfortable on my back. This was the position I was on the bed. Mm. Yeah, so I was laying on my back. Rumi as well is a very, uh, my partner is, uh, is um, he, he likes astrology very much. So we looked on his radix and Rumi is also a person who has a lot of fire. So I think he would have come fast like lightning in any position. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What what have you learned now from the birth and and the pregnancy, and um, how has it has it changed you? From the pregnancy, I have learned that. If you prepare for a very special event, this gives you a lot of power to believe in yourself that you can do it the way you want. And here I don't speak about uh, controlling things, but I, maybe as as uh, your natural self wants, let's say it like this. The, prepara the preparation in the pregnancy for me on all levels was very strengthening. And I think it's not only about birth, but it's also in life. If you prepare for something, this uh, transforms itself into experience. The birth was teaching me to see this as, a, as I said, as a special event, but as a, as a special natural event. I have a feel, I, I feel that there should not be so much, uh, there should not be so much focus on what can go wrong, but can be much more focused on the fact that it is natural, it's, uh, it's simple and maybe an education on another level about uh, what is really happening inside you maybe less medical and scientific because it's not only this very small uh, perception the birth it's a it's a it's a very complex uh, uh, field it involves emotional uh, dynamic it involves spiritual dynamic it involves uh, also energetical dynamic so maybe if there would be a more education on the holistic part of a bird, a person would be able to really find these things inside them. Because if we only hear about uh, forceps uh, injections, uh, these are not part of ourselves. So this we cannot identify with this. Yeah. So this the bird was teaching me that it is a complex process. And the afterbirth, like the, the, the time after birth, was teaching me to, to see everything like a birth and to try to treat everything like a birth. To see that the preparation is very important and it's better to, to build up something on a long term, to to take care of, of it in the preparation, although it's not here, and to wait for its birth, and uh, then to carry it afterwards. And this in any, any point of life, even if it's a relationship, or even if it's a food, or even if it's a project that uh, one has. 
yeah so it 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 gave me this um this way of seeing life and um how do you see yourself as a woman now has it changed your view on on your body on yourself on other women maybe and um has it changed the way you mother or the way you you interact with your family for sure it changed me also as a woman um, not only the birth but i think i think life itself changes us but for sure birth is an important part um, and the fact that the birth in the end gave me um, gave me the ability to see that i am strong that i have responsibility and that I have full responsibility on my thoughts, on myself, and that this creates more or less my possibilities in life. Of course, it, it, with, with, with such self-confidence, because in the end it gives you this, it gives you self-confidence. Of course, you, you have the ability to see yourself beautiful in each situation. You have the ability to yeah, even if, you know, even if life slaps you or if life gives you challenges, you still have the ability to regenerate. So this self-confidence in the end is like, um, is like a never-ending source of, of, you can do it more. There, you can do it. It's like this. It's a never-ending source of power, of inner strength. And now... How I mothered, maybe before with my first son, I had this idea that everything has to be perfect. <laughs> and now I just uh, put more focus that everything has to be true. So for, for especially for my, for my first son, if I have an uh, instinct or an emotion that I want to show to him, or that just, let's say, the life situation makes it like this, I prefer to show him that raw emotion of mine than to show him just the perfect image that I would like him to see in me. Um, yeah. Um. Would you free birth again? I would say now maybe something that a lot of mothers having are having inside them. I would free birth millions of times. <laughs> um, yet for this moment in my life, I don't uh, I don't want to have another child uh, when we have taken the decision to not to not have uh, more children because I would like to focus much more on other parts so I was joking one time with my mom and I said that I would like to to relieve this experience of birth so many times but without uh, having to 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 take a child out, you know. So I would, because it's very beautiful. So if I think there are so many methods in which we can experience the same what birth is, but we have to find it in ourselves because this is actually this is a perception. Um, yes, but I would for sure. I like it very much, and I would, I would do it again, even in, even in other situations. I would free many things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So you felt now in the end, looking back, having the baby in your family, you feel that this was the right decision and you are glad that you stayed home and yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Maria, um, what advice do you have to other women, those watching the video now, maybe those planning to be pregnant or those pregnant planning to free birth? Or what, what do you want to tell them in the end? This is one of the most, most difficult part. I would say to them, that most of the, uh, most of our searchings, in order to, reass to reassure ourselves that what we do is the right thing, most of the time comes from too little time that we give to ourselves to uh, to listen to what uh, what is happening inside us to it's not so much about choices at least in my case as it is to actually just listen to to myself these decisions i already took them inside me uh, because in in general to live a life where you give your control and your responsibility to others will never satisfy the inner being will always exist these questions but why i don't do it what is missing inside me that i don't do it so these decisions have already been taken by ourselves to experience and to us to experience what life gives us so the best is to just take time and space so we can hear so and we can feel this already taken decisions and once we hear them it's just like a like a snowball that shows everything it's just like you read the story in which you already already decided long ago something. I don't want to give advices on how to do or what to do. Just say that if we give space and 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 silence, everybody will hear their natural story. Yeah. What do you do in the end? What do you do to listen to your own intuition or to actually come to come to know what's right for you? I have a very deep trust. Uh, I have a very deep trust in my higher self. And I don't, uh, I don't see uh, that I am here in order to to reach a better place or to reach a more um, more enlightening enlightening way of being or more um, divine way of being or more connected way of being. I have a feeling inside me that I, as well as all the other persons. We are already there, so we are our higher selves, and we just have to listen how to to learn to to live in this in this human world. So I start from the point in which I am enough. I start from the point in my mind and also in my feelings in which I know that I am not a mistake, I know that I am not a wrong person, I know that I am full. But it's true, life is uh, complex 
and has many many uh, different uh, elements people are so unique situations are so complex and paradoxical that i need to really listen in order to be able to to live this fullness thank you maria for speaking to us and um, i hope women listening and watching can take a lot a lot from it i did <laughs> and um, i say all the um, contact details or if there's anything you want to um, give to them in the end we will write it down in the information box under the video and those watching the video if you want to leave a comment or tell maria how you liked what she said then just comment below and we will see it huh mm -hmm. yeah sounds good okay thank you so much maria thank you as well Anna. okay have a good night